This is Energy of Business Moments with Michael Seip, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their business success into your life and business. Energy of Business Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Michael Seip. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the Energy of Business Moments podcast. I am your host today, Michael Seip. And today on the show, we've got Eric Halverson. Eric's a sort of a non-traditional guy on our show, but he's got some great stories that I think will be very helpful for people, more about why we need to persevere and how we can adapt to some of life's blows when they do happen. So Eric is... is uh, a great guy, and he has a wonderful story, more from his sports days, but how that's translated into his business today and the expertise he brings to his business. So we're going to jump right into that, but I want to welcome Eric to the show now. So Eric, welcome to the Energy of Business Moments podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. I'm really excited to to be here and bring the insight that I have. Yeah. Okay. Well, Eric, before we get into your story, tell us a little bit about what kind of service you provide today. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm in the business to business space. I work with businesses across the country in IT. So a lot of people, um, you know, we're all busy. There's only 24 hours in the day. Um, our motto is we're going to save you time, effort, and hopefully some money. So um, I have worked to develop partnerships with distributors, um, manufacturers like Dell, Lenovo, Netgear, Verkata, a bunch of different companies. Um, so then that way, when any business needs any form of technology, all you have to do is let us know hardware or software, what it is, we go find it for you and ship it to your door directly from our manufacturer partners. Super easy process. We're just here for easy use. Yeah. I think a lot of businesses know that their IT needs grow and they'll change over time and finding that, that kind of person that will know what it is that they need and know where to go get that, that material uh, is is super valuable. So that's a great space to be in and tech isn't going away. So you're in a pretty stable industry for sure. Yeah, great. Well, um, so before we get into the, the business side, I think what I, I think would be valuable for people is to, is to understand a little bit of, of your history. Tell us a little bit about your sports experience and and into college and and all that kind of kind of transpired in in the sense of what it was you did in sports and then we're going to talk about some of those low moments you had and then some of the high moments you had in sports so tell us tell us about your your I'll say athletic career absolutely so i i wrestled um ever since second grade i got into it um parents were overly supportive of me doing that even though my dad when he was in high school, he did not like wrestling. It's pretty funny, but um, yeah, I wrestled uh, a long time and on the perseverance end, I actually didn't win a single match for three years when I started in second grade. So, I mean, I just kept pushing. I had fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and me and my dad traveled everywhere, even going into middle school and high school. I started traveling with Ben Askren. He's an Olympian MMA fighter. He's in the UFC um, fantastic guy. Um, amazing. He owns a um, chain of wrestling academies here in Wisconsin, AWA. Um, fantastic wrestling academies. I recommend anyone who wrestles to at least check it out and listen to what he has to say. Fantastic coaches over there. But um, going to high school, I wrestled for Pewaukee High School. I was ranked in the state a couple different times, but I ended up placing third in state my senior year. Um, qualified sophomore, junior, and senior year, and then went on to wrestle at St. Cloud State, which was at the time number one in the country for Division Two, and that was an experience. Uh, very high level guys there. The coach, um, Coach Costanzo, he was a very stand up guy. I enjoyed my time there. Um, very very good coach. I ended up having a shoulder surgery where I tore my labrum in three different areas and I fully tore my rotator cuff. Um, so I had to work through that. I came back, uh, ended up transferring a little bit closer to home here in Wisconsin, UW Parkside, where I wrestled one year and then I almost broke my leg. 
So um, I had to come back from that. And right around the time that I did, COVID hit. So we all went home anyways. Uh, so a long, long uh, career in, in the wrestling space, all through youth to high school to college. Uh, a lot of really good experience came from that. Yeah, well, I, I bet. So let's let's dive into some of that experience. Um, tell me what was going on with you when when you broke your leg and what what the impact was of of that setback to you personally, physically, and for you mentally. Yeah, absolutely. And even with the shoulder surgery too, uh, both injuries, I mean, it's something you can't prevent. You know, it's really hard to let go of things you can't change. And going through that, it's frustrating. It feels like you're just running into a brick wall over and over again. Um, but it really taught me to, to, to change my perspective and focus on what I can change. And I still struggle with it. Everyone does. But when you focus on your input and you focus on your effort, everything changes. You know, so at that time, my my focus changed from getting better in practice for these tournaments and matches and, you know, starting and all this, all these, those different areas to putting my effort into getting better, whether that was just resting, staying off my leg, not using my shoulder, um, being on crutches and going through my physical, physical therapy after, you know, the surgery and everything went well. It's just everything changed. So in order to and it makes pers persevering through it much easier when you focus on that, that input, the effort you're putting into getting better, getting through that all of a sudden becomes so much easier because now you're not focused on the output, whether it's good or bad. If I'm going to wrestle again, if I'm going to even be good at wrestling when I'm, when I'm through with these injuries, um, when you focus on that input, life gets so much easier. So my mindset going into that was, you know, I need to get better for getting on the mat. But after I came out of those experiences, it was, I need to focus on my effort and where my energy is going into to achieve that outcome. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Telling us how you got, got through that part um, and that valuable advice there. Tell me a little bit more about like in the moment, what happened, what was going through your mind when you broke your leg? Did, what were the doctors saying about your chances of continuing on as a wrestler? What were the, what was the sort of the, the negative speak going on around you at the time? Yeah. Um, both, both injuries. I was told by the doctor that I probably shouldn't go back. Um, with my, with my leg, they said that, um, at least it was, it was a break and breaks are a lot easier to, to manage and handle, but with my shoulder, I have I have anchors holding my labrum in place still. Those anchors are still there. Um, my surgeon said, "Yeah, your range of motion is it's going to be depleted. You might not be able to do things you used to do." Um, a lot of people come come back and they can't wash their own back in the shower. They can't scratch their own back, what have you. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, you know. So a lot of conversations were about quality of life too. It's, well, you could, you could go back, but what happens if it happens again? And it's almost putting that, that weight, that anxiety on your shoulders before it even comes to that circumstance. So it was definitely hard to stay positive at first because there's so much negative getting slung around and, and put into your head when you have injuries like that. Yeah, I can imagine. So, um, you know, we, we hear about athletes having career ending injuries or putting themselves so much at risk that, that if they go back out there again, that they're just, they're just gonna, uh, set themselves up for, for failure and or pain or for the rest of their life. And so I'm sure some of that was running through your head. So I'm curious, what was it that, 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 the switch that flipped or the, the thing that you grabbed onto to say, yeah, I'm going to go back. Yeah. Um, really it was just a love for the sport. I, especially with the shoulder surgery, I wanted to go back and I still want to be the best, but I just had so much fun. You know, I I've been doing it for so long. I didn't want to stop. Um, 
yeah, it was just really a love for the sport and love what I'm doing. When I broke my leg, it was a little bit of a different conversation there. Um, it, it was okay. I'm starting to get banged up here a little bit. You know, I've broken a lot of bones even just before college. I've concussions and, and surgery then. It was a lot. Um, it, it was tough to go through. But really what made me come back was just how much I loved it and how much I learned from it. You know, you're out on that mat and sure it's a team thing and it's dual meets and stuff, but it's just you. It's just you and one other guy. There's no excuses. It's all about the efforts that you put in in your preparation for the match. Um, you know, watching film, training, conditioning, how you're eating, how you're cutting your weight, things like that. There's so many different aspects to go into it, but it all ties together. And it teaches such a beautiful lesson over time of how you need to take every aspect of your life and how everything's going to affect your mindset and how you can push through things. Yeah. Well, that's great. So, so, it, you know, with the one injury, you talked about the love of the sport and that is an elevated anabolic kind of energy or thought and emotion and pairing. And so it makes sense that if you have that love and that thirst for it, then, then you can get back into it. But you talked about the other side of that with the with the leg piece and and other injuries you'd had and and how it was really just seeing the opportunity to to come out the other side. So I'm curious as as you're talking about that mindset shift, um, there's some qualities uh, that you specifically talked about of, of basically dedication, you know, prepping for a match, studying film, all those things that, that lead up to 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 getting back out there on the mat. How has that translated for you into your business in terms of dedication to your business? Absolutely. And again, it comes back to that effort. It's what you're putting in. Everybody, you know, a lot of people start a business for what I found one of two reasons for money or for time. They either want more time to themselves, they want to work on their own clock, they want to be able to spend more time with family on vacation, traveling, what have you, or they just want to go in and try to make a bunch of money, which is totally fine too. Um, and with that, a lot of people focus on those outcomes. But what goes into getting there is what people don't focus on. And when they don't achieve those outcomes, they they're not liking it very much, you know. But where where I feel like I had a leg up is because I already had focus from wrestling in those different areas, that determination to push through different issues to have those outcomes. So when I started my business, it, it was a little bit interesting. It's still young. So it still is a little bit interesting. There are different things that pop up even daily to, to push through and that's okay. Um, it's a lot easier to push through because I know the effort required to get through those roadblocks and achieve the outcomes that, that I want to see for myself the business and and my family as I lead my family. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that makes sense. And what I, I love there is, is it does translate. There is a translation from effort into, from sports into, into business. Um, so tell me, you know, we, we talked about sort of the, the, the setbacks, if you will, that those lows in, in your wrestling career and how that's translated for you and in, in being a lesson or series of lessons that you can then incorporate into your business. Tell me about like a emotional high for you, whether it was wrestling, whether it's business, what was something that, that really you reflect back on and you're like, yeah, that was awesome. Well, to start with wrestling, there have been a lot of cool things I've gotten to do. I've gotten to travel to many different States. I, I wrestled internationally in New York. I wrestled a couple guys outside of the, it, from not in the U.S. It was really cool. Um, I'd have to say, though, the the high that I really had was my last traveling tournament with my dad. We traveled because I kept on thinking the whole drive up um, to, to Midwest Nationals was the tournament. The whole drive, I'm just thinking, this is the last time that we're in the same car traveling for wrestling. And when we used to do this, when I was in second grade, we used to travel and I used to lose all the time. And how cool would it be if on our last traveling tournament, I went through and I won this. And you got this big belt for winning. I have it on my wall right here. I went and I won that tournament. I just remember just 
the, the having the time of our lives on the drive back with this giant belt that I won and just telling old wrestling stories. That was really the high for me is just spending time with him and um, being able to do that, you know, for first tournament, definitely lost for three years, all losses. And the very last one coming out victorious and just being able to share that with, with my dad, we're very close. So that's definitely the, the high for me in my business. The high is the relationships. Um, a lot of my clients, it's, it's not something where we're only on a professional level. I genuinely care about helping people. And I think that's where a, a huge part of dealing with us is, is it's a huge plus because I'm always going to be honest and, and straightforward. If something's not in stock and it's not coming for a year, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's not coming for a year. And sometimes that happens. Supply chain's all out of whack because of COVID and it's still having to be straightened out. Um, but you know, I care about where you get your things from. If I'm, if I'm not going to be the best option, I'm going to tell you and that's fine. And even outside of that, I care about what you're doing in your, in your free time. I'm going to ask like, Hey, how's the life treating you? Like, how are you doing? Is there anything that I can even be taken care of even further than that? And I'm open with my life. I constantly tell people like, yeah, well, you know, I get to go fishing this weekend with my little brother. We haven't been able to do that in so long. I'm super excited. I mean, me and my wife are expecting a little girl in January. I'm super stoked for that. I just built the crib two Saturdays ago and sure it was a pain, but I loved every second, you know, like it's just, it's those things I get to share and build those relationships with that. That's the high for me. Yeah, that's great. And I, I love the the piece there about um, this, the journey, if you will, not just the drive, but the journey over many, many years well over a decade, maybe even almost two decades of traveling with your dad um, and to be able to reflect back on where you'd started with no wins and sticking with it. You want to talk about perseverance. There's the classic right there of you continuing to to press forward and then having that, that journey and then having the celebration there at the end. So it makes sense that that was a really, really, really long climb up that roller coaster to get to that, to get to that high. But man, that was way, way up there. So a very cool story. Yeah. And then of course, obviously the customer service side of, of the business and being able to, to, to meet client needs above, above and beyond what, uh, what you might normally provide. Very cool. So, so Alec, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Eric, I'm very curious. What is it about you that um, if you could do anything in terms of being able to meet somebody, whether it's a mentor, a coach, a historical figure, like if you could meet anybody deceased or living, who would that be? And why would that be? Well, I will say it's a very tough question to ask. There's so many cool people throughout history that you could say, and you could give any reason and they'd be valid. But the little kid in me want, wants to say Arnold Schwarzenegger because I wanted to look like him by the time I turned 22, just big and ripped. Obviously, it didn't happen. But um, his story is just amazing, coming from a different country and just working so hard and achieving so much. It, it's really moving his motivation and his his drive is admirable i mean if i could meet him i i don't even know what i would say that's the thing I, i'd be just so choked up and happy um in a more in a more personal growth aspect um there's a there's an author a canadian author his name's graham wardle he i'm going through a book right now called time has come and it really takes you through and walks you through why do you act this way? Why do you think this way? How to change your mindset for the better for yourself um, in different aspects of your life. And it breaks it down in a beautiful form of, of poetry and then goes through and explains through his life, his experiences, what challenged him to, to change. Even if he's still changing, you know, what questions arise? What can you be asking yourself in certain situations to make that adjustment mentally to just be a better person. It's a very, very interesting book. And I, I'd recommend that. I've I've really been enjoying it. I, I've been loving it. If I could meet him and pick his brain and ask him questions, 
I could be there for hours. Yeah, it sounds like it when you get in a book like that and and really gets the gears turning and you start having new perspectives, yeah, it creates a whole bunch of questions for sure. And of course, obviously having somebody like a Arnold there makes sense too. Somebody who's overcome that many obstacles and you can obviously personally relate to that. So it's a good example. All right. Well, um, Eric, how is it that uh, if people want to get with you for some IT help or want to talk to you more, how can they go about reaching you? Yeah. I mean, um, you can go to our website, just halversontechsourcing.com. Super simple way to contact us there. You can give us your information. Um, Email me, just E-R-I-C at halversontechsourcing.com. Super simple. Shoot me an email. I will respond, um, honestly, by phone too. Phone numbers on the website, go ahead, text, call, whatever. That's something I pride myself in. When you call the business, it's not somebody else answering some gatekeeper or whatever. It's me. Um, and it will always be me. I, I will pride myself in that for as long as I can. Yeah. Great. Well, good. Well, I have greatly enjoyed uh, recounting your experience and especially the wrestling side of it. I, I had wrestled myself in, in high school, but only for one year. So your journey is pretty significant. And I great, greatly appreciate you telling that story and, and talking to how you overcame a lot of your challenges. I think it'll resonate with a lot of people on how that can translate over into a mentality for business. So thanks again for being on the show today, Eric. It's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Energy of Business Moments with your host, Michael Seip. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.